So here we are, grizzly, bear. Everything just fits in here. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Grizzly and Bear Overland in Australia. This is the list of modifications that we are going to make. Oils, I need to change the oils. 60 litre water bladder installation. Water pump and filters. Seat covers. Connect the camper 12 volt. Install the fridge, solar 12 volt socket and the charger. Rear storage box. Rear steps. Fix the awning. Paint the shovel. We got a new shovel. It's my old shovel. A CB radio. Compressed air tank for the ARB compressor. And we need to replace our drain tap. Busy couple of weeks ahead of us before we actually hit the outback. First, and most importantly, it's gonna be a full service. Before we arrived in Australia, I ordered the service kit for the Defender. And I'm gonna do the easiest job first, <laughs> the air filter. Quite easy to pop the top off of these things. That's only 5,000 kilometers on that as well. New air filter installed, and now the fun bit. Trying to get these two latches at the back edge here hooked under there and down again. It's a bit of a mission. Are you finding what you need? Yeah, I think so. I always second guess myself when I come to buy engine oils and the more you read on the internet, everybody's got a different opinion. 5W30 or 5W40. 5W30 is what's recommended in the manufacturer and they use a lot in, um, in Europe. In Australia, I know a lot of Land Rover Defender owners prefer the 5W40 because it's more suited to the hotter conditions. I don't know, it's recommended on one of the uh, Land Rover sites, so we'll give it a crack for the gearbox and transfer box. Maybe someone remembers this shirt. It's done me a good 10 years, maybe. Ripped in half, so now it's a rag. We just got back from the shopping center, so I knew the engine oil was nice and hot and as thin as it's gonna be. Always a good time if you're doing any sort of oil change. Take it for a drive first and then pull the plug straight after you get home and the oil will drain out very, very easily. The oil is drained, completely dumped, so then after the oil is drained, I crack the oil filter housing to remove the oil filter. A new oil filter or service kit should always come with the new O-ring along with a new drain plug. You should put a new drain plug in the oil sump. Good idea to try when you remove the oil ring and put the new one, mostly when you remove the old one, is not to dig in too much with a screwdriver or anything because you don't really want to put any scratches on that sealing surface. I like to just roll it around like that. Try not to get it too twisted up. Give it a quick wipe just to make sure there's no debris. Filter installed, <laughs> O-ring in place. You agree? Yeah. All right. This is the one that's supposed to be 25.5 Newton meters. That's precise. Yeah, it definitely doesn't need much because you're not sealing this with force. The O-ring is sealing it. New drain plug with a new O-ring. And this should be done up to a specific torque too. But again, I don't have a torque wrench, so. Gax, beautiful gift from uh, Japan. I don't think I can over torque it with this little ratchet. Just give it a good nip and good enough. And a little more. You happy with that? Perfect. One more, one more. One more for good luck. <laughs> I'm not sure I trust that. <laughs> Final job for the day is going to be the fuel filter. It's very important, especially on this 2.4 litre Defender, to put some diesel in there is because uh, we don't have a lift pump in our diesel tank. Our pump is a high pressure fuel pump in the engine bay itself. You get any air in that filter, air gap in the line, and it's difficult. It's pretty hard. You gotta start cracking injectors or play with the air compressor, pumping up the diesel tank. Bang. Today I'm doing the gearbox oil and the transfer box oil. This little pump only costs about $15 and to be honest, I didn't think it was gonna work. It looked a bit flimsy. Oil came out of the gearbox, looked very, very clean. Out of the transfer box, little bit dirty, little bit milky. Always be sure to crack your inlet, your fill up point before you drain. Opening your fill up first helps the oil to drain because the air can get in and, and push it down. And secondly, if you open the bottom one first and dump your oil and then you can't get the top one open, 
then you're screwed. <laughs> We're gonna take it off to do all the rest of the maintenance that I need to do, having the camper off. Always damage the threads. Damage them good, so that then the thread seal sticks to the threads, bites into the threads. And also, that's the correct way to put it on. Turn it the same way that you're gonna be turning your um, fitting onto there, so clockwise. Our mud guards, or mud slaps, whatever you wanna call them, were, uh, were buggered. I placed some new ones in here, pretty flimsy to be honest. It was about time that we replaced these ones. They've been looking a bit shabby for a very, very long time. I had to use some polish because all the letters, we could see the outlines, and this one are slightly smaller. Wow, oh, looks good, I like it. Today's project. Now this one wasn't in the plan, but unfortunately, this old winch, the Warn XP9500, is the one that came with this ute. The electric motor died on it. The only way I could make it work was smash it with a hammer. Got a pretty good deal on this EFS Recon. It's a 13,000 pound winch. Actually, probably the correct size for our weight. You may not need it, but when you do, you really need it. And I wasn't prepared to start the Australian trip with a faulty winch. The new winch I'm putting in is a little bit too big to squeeze through that space. I could force it, but there's a few little scratches already. I don't want to make it any worse. So what I'm doing is removing the bash plate and I'm going to uh, put the winch in from underneath. With the new winch installed, it was time to go and put it to the test. Welcome to Team Thicket. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Remember French, you say that word? Team Thicket. Liz parents with us today? We just use those little ones to deflate the tires. You've got four, you put them on the car, easy done. 15 psi at the front? Yeah, around about. We've got a new rattling noise for a change. Lee's under the car, checking what's going on. It's only an exhaust bracket. The clicking noise is just an exhaust bracket. Looks like needs replacing. Easy fix. In certain part of Australia, totally legal to go and drive on the beach. This is what we're gonna do today and we're also gonna play with the new winch. Check what's ahead before I dive into it. That's why we check. It's a cliff. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Meter, meter and a half high, little limestone cliff. Dead end. was the noise of the spring rubbing against the tire because once again it came out of its housing. Let's see what we can do, I need to go to the toilet first thing. I'm gonna go down and swing to the left and my need to sort of help guide me a bit. So we're gonna put some compressors, not that you just don't want to do it, but pretty hard. before has yeah. it? Yeah and I thought I had the fix. It's good to know this is the stuff that you wanted you want to go wrong here you know. 
it's all um, experience. Yeah, it? exactly. The retention straps underneath that are supposed to stop this from happening. Something's going on. Well, look at that. Where the rubbers. <laughs> Shouldn't have damaged the tie though, I don't think. If only I'd brought the bloody big hammer. The airbag supply hose is kinked over, so I can't let the pressure out of it. So, unfortunately right now, I think I'm gonna have to try and just cut the airbag line. Is it sad? Sad? Uh, I can fix it, so I don't wanna put a hole in that. If it's just the connection, I can fix it. Moving now, you see that? This is why you need a big lever. Yeah. I bought the through these things, so I was like, oh, it can work as a lever. Oh, a little bit more. <laughs> I'll stop because I'll bend that in. Yeah, get a bit of some of the old skills coming back. <laughs> it's not a big enough lever, is it? Should get easier as I go down here. Yeah! <laughs> what a feeling, huh? See, that's what makes it so exciting, being at, having something go wrong, but then thinking of different ways. It's like, oh, what have we got? Is it right in? That's in. That's as far as in as, in as it goes. Slightly excessive for the snaggers or what? Oh, you reckon it's all right? This is a Lymington, which is a sponge cake that you dip in chocolate and coconut on the outside. It's very delicious, very Australian. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the episode. We apologize in advance, as it won't be any videos for a few weeks. We will be attempting something big and I won't be able to edit videos. I will take my first break in four years to hopefully accomplish my long time dream. Don't worry, we will be back soon with some awesome Aussie adventures. And we will also make some live videos along the way on Patreon. Wish us luck. Until then, take care. Bye bye.